Now, there's been lots of talk around the new royal book, Endgame, written by journalist Omid Scobie. Well, sales of the book have been halted in the Netherlands amid reports that the translated version appears to name a member of the royal family who allegedly questioned what colour Harry and Meghan's son Archie's skin would be Ooh. when he was born. Um, it's an interesting one. Will you be reading the book, Denise? It is on my Christmas list. Is it? <laughs> Um, I will read it. You know, listen, I think that we know enough about this guy and how how much or how little he actually knows Meghan and Harry, but we certainly know which camp he falls in, and it is the same camp that I fall in. So I have always been a very outspoken um, supporter of of Harry and, and Meghan, you know, and I'm sort of outnumbered on not necessarily this panel, I'm not with Linda, but mm -hmm. certainly on, on, on this show and, and, and generally. So I think that I will be reading it. I will be aware that some of it is his take only, but um, I think I will be more likely to believe more about what he says in this book than maybe some people would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the interesting thing, isn't it? Because we just naturally end up taking sides, mm. don't we, Sue? I was going to say that, I mean, I find it interesting you talk about camps, which camp you're in, and it's like, I don't think we need to be in a camp. No. Because the, the trouble is with humans, we all have our own reality, and whatever we believe, we seem to think is the truth. And let's be honest, none of us know what's going on in there. It's all supposition, and we will find things that fit, fit our narrative. So isn't it more important that we, we don't choose to be in a camp? I mean, it's a sad situation. I like being in a camp, Sue. <laughs> she likes being in a camp. Sometimes there is just no hope for people, is there? <laughs> but I think that's the problem. I mean, it's like, the, the, more, the more we fuel this, and the more we give our opinions, the more, the more we're adding to the flames, aren't we, of, of, of what's going on. And none of us know what's going on. It's just, it's a family matter that's really quite None of our business. Well, yeah. yeah. But the press, the press are obsessed with it. Yeah. We are talking about it then again on our show. Then you should know better than to take sides I based can't. on what you are heard from the press. Well, the there thing is, I, I don't just take sides on what is based on the press. I take sides on the fact that Harry took his wife away for a reason. We, I agree with those reasons. So, you know, I don't need to know the abject proof to be behind his decision to leave what I think is a toxic British press as regards his wife. But would you not agree that unless, <laughs> unless Harry picked up the blower and went, hey, Den, I'm going How to do take you know he hasn't it away. Sue? How do you know he hasn't? <laughs> <laughs> Also, we have to remember, I guess, that this is written by someone who's making money from the sales of a book yeah, as well. Yeah, and exactly. so, you know, all of us talking about it fuels it. But it's like you say, you, this sort of a taking sides, taking a camp, it's, it's a very natural thing and it shouldn't be the way it should be, as you mm. say, Sue. And it's a bit, it's like watching the jungle at the minute. You'll, yeah. have, you'll, be, in so, you'll be maybe Team Nella or you'll be Team Nigel or whatever way. I mean, two it former campions every day, sitting, yeah. mm. sitting here. You know what it's like to be in there. Mm. And the importance, I guess, to try and find some cohesion amongst a lot of people because you're trying to survive, yeah. but yet you can't help but feel a bit more drawn to one yeah. person and than the I other. Think, I think you do. I mean, I know last year when I was in, obviously, we had our controversial character in with us. Um, but you do, it very much, it take, you do put down your prejudices and your opinions because you have one common goal, and that is to eat and to survive and to live in a very challenging environment and live it in the best way possible for all of you. And I think we managed that, but it is, it's not easy. Not it's not easy. Show. No, of course it's not. So what did you find like uh, in there, Linda? Did you find I, yourself I found it really of... difficult. I mean, the first day, especially, the first day in the camp and that, and we were supposed to jump out of a helicopter, but it rained so much we couldn't, so we had to walk into the jungle and we were walking for hours. And what you see is like five minutes on the television. Mm. We were yeah. soaking wet, we were miserable. I kept thinking someone's going to give me an umbrella in a minute. No, that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I did enjoy my time in there, and I was in with a group of really nice people, Charlie Brooks in particular, um, David Hayes, um, Colin Baker, 
Rosemary Schrager, so she did all the cooking. We ate quite well that year. But we had Helen Flanagan, who's absolutely lovely, but didn't do one trial. Oh, yeah. She just screamed through every trial. She's and every time be... I did my washing and hung it out on the rock, she'd come and put my socks on. I'd go, they're my socks! What are you doing? <laughs> uh, um, no, I did. I enjoyed my time. It's hard, though. It, it, I think... I mean, I, I've, I've done Big Brother, not, not the jungle, so the actual food limits were not really the same when I was in there, but it was the way the personalities changed. So there were certain people in there who were initially fantastic fun to get on with, but if they then had the gym taken away from them, and if they didn't have a night's sleep because of my snoring, which did happen, that would completely change their affiliation and their friendship with me. And as each person got evicted, the dynamic changed, and I found that really, really hard. So yeah. people that you thought were your friends were suddenly not as not as friendly. I found it a really stressful. I would be more worried about th those sort of friendships rather than the the, the not eating yeah. as an outsider who's never never been in there. But I think that the pressure of the trials, when you know how hungry people are, mm. like Nella and um, they didn't seem to care that much last night, in my yeah. opinion. But the pressure of going back into a hungry crowd and saying we've got no stars, I would find that really oh, stressful. That, 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 become, that does become your focus. And, I, I, and with Matt, he got, he did get the stars all the time, and we were very grateful. I think that you know, another question is, what are your feelings about you know controversial? political characters using a family's evening show to garner support is a different matter. And being but, paid an absolute fortune. But when you're in there, you really... It is about you just forget almost, the human but... beings getting on, making it work. And I think we were very lucky. We were a very grown-up year mm. and, and we coped very well with Nigel it. Nigel had obviously done his homework. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's obviously done his homework because all he kept talking about was airtime. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was working out share. how, many air time, how much airtime he was going to get. So. Interesting. It's going to heat up again. Whatever though, it was, it's it? too yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>